Suspension Max has got the answer for your truck. Now these new trucks, this one being a 2012 2500 HD Duramax with the heavy engine and transmission package is weighing down on the front end. Now this truck measures two and a half inches lower in the front than the rear. Now the Max Cam system is going to lift the front end up, maintaining the comfortable ride and giving the customer that ability to have that greater clearance for the larger 305 AT off-road tires. Now measuring the back is done the same way. A measurement through the center line of the tire will tell us the difference front to rear. Now we need to put the Max Cam in and that can be adjusted for different ride heights and we can tell you all about that when we get to it. But right now this truck is measuring two and a half inches low in the front. Chevrolet and GMC heavy duty pickups since 1988 have had torsion bars. Now the torsion bar is a large spring steel bar which is supporting the front suspension through the hexagon opening on one end. Now traveling through the torsion bar is the spring pressure of the truck. Now when it gets to the back anchor here, it's locked and located in the cross member. Now this huge amount of spring pressure needs to be relieved so that you can safely either put a lift kit in, service the front suspension, or put in a leveling kit like the Max Cam 3 that we're going to do today. Now this tool is brought to you by Suspension Max. This is a heat treated alloy steel frame heavy duty lead screw with the provisions to fit this cross member properly and safely load and unload this torsion bar. Now this tool is designed to locate in, an in a hole at the top. Now you can see that the tool is safely locked in place, it's not going to move, and it clears this larger exhaust system that this Duramax diesel has. Now this tool is going to be adjusted and this top anvil is going to locate right there on that torsion bar lever. Now if we tighten that up, we can then safely remove this lock and adjustment mechanism and unload the torsion bar. It'll then no longer be twisted in the truck, but just be neutral. Now if you can see, we have adjustment bolts here for the torsion bars. And you may just want to take a visual note, noticing that the variables between these two adjustment bolts is not always going to be equal. That's due to the design variables in the torsion bar, the anchor, and the necessary preload that's needed to balance the truck out. Now the first thing we're going to do, we've got the truck jacked and supported, no weight on the front tires. Now what we're going to do, we're going to remove both torsion bar bolts fully. We're going to do that right now. Now we've taken the bolts out, but you're still not going to get the system out because there's preload resting on this block. This adjustment bolt is our fine tuning, but we still have that tension on that adjustment and that, that horizontal nut that's through that cross member. Now what we're going to do for that is we're going to need the suspension max torsion bar unloading tool. And what this is going to do, this is strategically going to be placed on the cross member at the top and the little dimple sphere in the bottom. Once you have that safely located in the top, you can see that this block which originally had the torsion bar adjustment bolt can now be taken off. You can see that the pressure of that torsion bar is now anchored against this tool. Now we're going to reverse direction on the tool. And now this whole system is actually unloaded and safe to work on. We'll do the same on this side of the truck.
this side. It's that easy. We've got the torsion bar safely unloaded with the Suspension Max Super T-Max torsion bar tool. You can see there's no tension here, but the torsion bars are still semi-frozen in the front and also semi-frozen in the back. There's an access hole in the back of most torsion bar cross members. If there's nothing in the way, an air chisel like this is the answer. That's how you get them out. You ready? We've safely taken the torsion bar preload off. We've removed the torsion bar levers. The suspension is now fully unloaded. We can now focus on the shock extenders and the differential lowering kit because we don't want to fight this spring pressure from the torsion bars. So now everything is relaxed in the front, it'll be much easier to work on. Now to do the differential spacers, it's easiest to remove this skid plate. There's two mounting bolts in the back and two mounting bolts in the front. This particular truck has a snow plow on it, which the plow frame bracketry is encapsulating this skid plate. So what we're going to do is we're going to work to the left and to the right of this skid plate still accessing the differential mounting bolts. Max Cam 3 leveling kit includes differential spacers which are going to be strategically placed on the front of the di front differential and the rear of the front differential. What those spacers and bolts are going to do is bring this differential down so that this CV angle is not at a high point causing this pinching of the CV boot. You can notice how this boot is like totally crimped together. When we lower that diff down, that angle is going to decrease and this boot is going to relax. You got to remember that boot is turning constantly. Every revolution of the tire is a revolution of that boot. And we need these boots to have maximum life expectancy to protect that joint inside. And that's what that Max Cam 3 differential lowering kit is going to do. Now, there's a 21 millimeter bolt on the bottom and also a 21 on the top. Now the top is kind of tough to get to. So what I like to use is a 21 millimeter socket on a flex head ratchet that will allow me to go above the bolt, come down on top of the nut, holding it from the bottom and run, backing the bolt out with the air gun. I'll be able to get this up in there and kind of bring it down right on top of that bolt. That bolt is, that nut is not welded in the frame. So we're going to set that ratchet right on top of that bolt. Now we're only going to back the bolt out a small amount, not allowing the whole differential to move around. We just want to bring it down the thickness of our spacer, then we'll change it out. Again, we're going to put the bolt back in and lightly hold that nut so that the differential doesn't just drop all the way down. Just a couple threads on the bolt. Okay, now we'll go to the back one. This is the, the differential mounting bolt. It goes through the differential mount up through the frame and the nut is captured on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this flex head ratchet with a 21 millimeter socket. It's going to go right up and drop right on that bolt. Do you see how I put that ratchet in there? Right up and over the top right there. Okay. Now that's going to sit there while I back the bolt off right here. Okay.
See the gap we've got here? We're going to supply new bolts and a spacer that's going to bring that differential down. It's going to help this driveline angle, but really help the CV boot angle. See that bolts out? Now we've got the new differential spacer is going to slide right in there. This bolt's going to go right back through and go through that frame and engage with that factory nut at the top. A couple turns by hand to make sure that it's fully threaded. Reverse the process. It's that easy. Included with the Suspension Max Max Cam 3 leveling kit, you're going to get four of the specified shock relocation spacers that are going to combine with this factory stud. We've removed all the shock nuts factory. Yep. All we've got to do is install the Suspension Max spacers that are part of the Max Cam 3 for this 2012 Chevy Heavy Duty. Put that shock right back in that mount. The new hardware on. The supplied spec fasteners from Suspension Max. Double checking all your fasteners. Pull that boot back. And you're good to go. Finishing up the Suspension Max, Max Cam 3. Everything's been done in the front, the differential spacers are in, the shock hardware is in, it's all together up front. Last thing, calibration of the Max Cams in the B1 position for two and a half inches of lift. We've got everything coated with never seize or anti seize. We're going to slide this up in the frame. You can see it'll go right up there. Okay. And then the torsion bar has hexes on it. Now it's not important to have that hex perfectly in the same position because I can turn this anywhere I want. It's still going to lock in the front. It's still going to lock in the max cam. See how that came all the way back? Now you'll notice the max cam is lower now than what the original lever was. That's because of the calibration. The more you calibrate it, it changes in incremental degrees, one position, two positions, three positions, all based on that calibration. Now once we get this in here, we've got that alignment clip holding everything stacked in position, we're going to put the Super T-Max torsion bar tool back in position up in the frame at the top and then it's going to locate right there and that's going to draw that torsion bar lever right back up so we can assemble it. This is the lock. That needs to go in right here. Now once that torsion bar locking mechanism is there, you can reverse direction on the bolt. And that one's in. Remove the clip. Reinsert it on the other Max Cam. It goes back in position here. Bring the 
torsion bar lever, torsion bar back. There again. Back in place. You can see how much pressure's on that. If you don't have the right tool, that explosive pressure of that torsion bar could blow any other tool apart. Now we're going to reinsert the adjustment bolts for the torsion bar settings. Now this is your primary adjustment here with your geared mechanism. This is your secondary adjustment or your fine tuning. Now this, we're not going to run it all the way in. We're not going to run it three quarters. We're just going to put it in about a quarter of an inch where the levers are just raising up off this block and we can stop and put the truck down on the ground. Now these blocks are self-centering. So we run that bolt. Now we've got a, 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 a fair amount of adjustment. We can go back and adjust on this anytime we need. We're making the final adjustments for the ride height on this 2500 HD. And you can see that there's a control arm mount here. This is metallic and this is the control arm. Now as you raise the truck, this air gap is going to be reduced. Now if some companies tell you we can give you three inches of lift, there's a good chance that this control arm is going to be limited out on this bump stop. What we need to do is we need to make sure that there's an air gap through here so that this upper A arm can move up and down freely and not hinder the ride. We're going to make a small adjustment on the torsion bars and bring this air gap down a little bit to give the truck a more level profile. But that's the determining factor to the overall ride height. Notice this ride height here in the back. These trucks have a huge profile in the back with those three inch wide springs. They sit extremely high in the rear. Now this truck here, we've put the Max Cam 3 in and that's gave us the ability to get this front end up so that the front end is two and a half inches higher than where it started. Now that gives us a nice level profile We've got the Max Cam 3s in with the differential kit to lower the CV axle angles, the shock extension kit, and we put the load cells on that help cushion the control arm with the new higher profile so that he maintains this clearance when he's plowing or driving up and down inclines. Now this is a patented system. We've got GM dealers installing this on brand new pickups. This is a great system. It maintains that factory ride quality. You'll have a wonderful truck. Brought to you by Suspension Max.